I do know we have Bob Holt with us right now uh, from uh, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Bob, appreciate you making time between all the Zoom press conferences you are in on today, my man. I mean, this is uh, today is a Zoom Thursday if I've ever seen one. Yeah, zooming around, had Hunter Yurichek and had, uh, I, I thought it was going to be a Day Van Horn Zoom, but the day was on it, but it was all six of the coaches that are have teams in the Globe Life uh, Tournament to uh, open season next month. And, um, and we got Eric Musselman coming out. I think Mike Neighbors has one today, so a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Well, thanks for, for coming on with us to discuss this stuff. So, uh, let's start with uh, let's start with the basketball game from last night and some things that you'd be interested to talk to us about uh, heading into what's hopefully a game Saturday against Vanderbilt. I am still. I mean, look, a win is a win. That was a really nice win to come from behind, but this is just it's become too routine now. Three games in a row to come out flat and be down by nineteen. You know, I don't think you can come from behind from nineteen the way that that. Uh, that LSU and Alabama were playing. Auburn's a different story, but for me, that's that's the thing I'm most worried about with this team is it is still a roller coaster, and even a comeback win yesterday doesn't make me think that it won't be a roller coaster moving forward. Well, yeah, obviously it was a lot better to win that game than to lose it, but a lot, lot of things disturbing about that first half, you know, getting off to another bad start on offense. They were 3-20 before they got, got hot. Um, one thing Eric said after the, after the game was that he's he's going to shorten his rotation. If you look at the, I mean, it was very interesting. He started JD Note for the first time and he struggled. And then he only played 29 seconds in the second half. And I don't think he would have played that except Jalen Tate fouled out and uh, Devo Davis turned it over twice against the press. So Eric put Note in there, and then he came down and he just kind of dribbled around and took. A Pretty bad shot, but he put Davis back in. Davis was actually guarding uh, Cooper when he got picked on that last play. They had Auburn's Jalen Williams uh, set a pick, and then Arkansas, you know, was able to make Cooper miss a tough shot. But um, you know, Jalen Williams played the whole twenty minutes of that second half, and uh, Tag Tate would have played the whole twenty if he hadn't fouled out. And you know, Devo, uh, you know, basically they went with a six-man rotation in that second half. If you don't count Note, he only played 29 seconds. So I think moving forward, you know, Eric said um, he's going to tighten his rotation and sounds like guys are going to have to earn their minutes back in practice, if, if at all. So that, that'll be interesting to see, uh, assuming they can play Saturday. Or your check said, you know, as far as he knows, they're going to play Saturday. They've got nowhere they're not going to play. So hopefully, um, you know, Vanderbilt's uh, COVID issues will be under control and they can go ahead and play that game. Uh, Hunter also referred on the Zoom press conference that they're hoping, they're expecting to have a full uh, football stadium for the start of the season. But, I mean, that's September, so who knows in January if that's actually going to be the case. You know, he did acknowledge, though, that teams did come after uh, Barry Odom uh, and that he made it a top priority to retain uh, his defensive coordinator. I'm sure Sam Pittman made clear that he wanted to keep Barry Odom here for at least another season. But doesn't it feel like this is also something that you'll face next year and i think if you get two years out of barry odom um you've you've got you've done very well because there are going to be other teams i think that are going to be looking for him as a as a head coach yeah i, I definitely would not be surprised if barry gets another opportunity to be, be a head coach and i guess it depends on if he thinks it's a good enough opportunity to leave but yeah i mean it's kind of a double-edged sword if you have good coaches other teams come after him and they might get them but you know, I remember like Frank Burrell used to say, you don't want to have coaches that other schools don't want. I mean, you want to keep them if they're doing a good job, but, um, you know, you want coaches that other people, you know, are envious of or covet because that means, you know, you've got good coaches who are doing a good job. So it's kind of a nice problem to have because if you have a bunch of guys on your staff nobody else wants, that means you don't have a very good staff. You find it interesting how, I mean, there are these similarities between what happened at Arkansas uh, three years ago and what's happening at Tennessee right now. Different reasons. I mean, you've got violations that are going to send Tennessee's football program back quite a bit. But, I mean, Arkansas was looking for an AD and a football coach at the same time, and they went coach first, then athletic director. Tennessee, I mean, this is quick. Three days after Fulmer steps down or was forced to step down, they hire a, they're, they're going to hire Danny White. 
You know, so I don't know. It always felt like, you know, three years ago, Arkansas did it backwards, you know, and Tennessee just quickly jumps on an athletic director, and they're gonna, they got to get a head coach as quickly as they can. Yeah, I mean, that, that obviously didn't work out well for Arkansas, hiring a coach with an interim AD. I never thought that made a whole lot of sense. Um, you know, having both uh, jobs open at the same time is just not a very good situation to be in. Um, that being said, yeah, yeah, I wonder how how uh, when Tennessee first reached out to Danny White, because I don't think, you know, this, this obviously Tennessee, that they were looking for a reason to fire Jeremy Pruitt with cause. So they wouldn't have to pay that buyout. <clears throat> so this has probably been in the works for a while, maybe a few weeks. So, I mean, it wouldn't shock me. Nobody will probably ever admit this, but they might have reached out to Danny White you know, a month ago. Mm. You know, just, hey, man, you know, you're, you're our guy. You know, you're on deck, so to speak. So be, be uh, you know, loosening up, getting ready to bat. And, um, that, and then... As far as the coach, you know, they, they've got, uh, um, you know, I'm having a break. The, the Auburn, uh, uh, Kevin Steele, um, he might be their interim coach all year because you wonder how good a coach are you going to get right now. I mean, and they may be able to go out and get their guy. And like you mentioned, maybe he'll bring Josh Heupel with him from, from UCF. But um, I could see a situation where maybe Steele's their interim coach and then they go back at it, um, you know, kind of like when John L. Smith was the interim coach here, and you know Jeff Long took his time surveying the field and decided to hire Brett Bielma ultimately. But um, you know, and right now Tennessee is just a, a dumpster fire. I mean, they've got—I guess they just felt like it was worth it to basically blow up their own program to get rid of Jeremy Pruitt because they've got all their best players in the transfer portal. I mean, it's going to take them a long time to recover from this, I think, especially in the SEC. You know, um, I mean, that they might end up worse than Arkansas was there for a while. So um, you got to wonder uh, what coach would want to take that on. You know, I mean, obviously there are guys that will take the job, but could they get a really quality coach to take that on? Because right now it looks like, I can't remember who tweeted this, but somebody basically said Tennessee giving themselves the death penalty, which I thought was a pretty good analogy. Bob Hope joining us here on halftime. Got a couple more minutes with you, Bob. Want to get your thoughts on a couple last minute deals here? You got you mentioned Mike Neighbors. Want to have his Zoom coming up here later on, and obviously the big topic for him, their his team taking on the UConn Huskies. Bob, this is a big deal, just not only for this women's program and just the trajectory of the just of the respect level that this program has. Big opportunity for this team to try to possibly go out and get a win, but just to be on the same court as. Arguably, the Alabama Crimson Tide of college football, the UConn women Husky, the UConn Huskies of women's college basketball. It's a big deal for this basketball program. Oh yeah, and especially getting them into Walton Arena. Yes, you don't go there. You're not playing them on a neutral court. You're, you're getting them to come here. That's that's a big deal because I, I think UConn's ranked third, but they won. I don't know. I've lost kind of many national championships. They won, but I said they supplanted Tennessee as the uh, top, you know, women's program just, you know, based on tradition and history and accomplishments and everything. Obviously, you know, South Carolina has been, and Baylor have been really good of late too, but you had to get Baylor and UConn on your home court the same season. That's pretty phenomenal. And, um, you know, reading the uh, the release you know, they put out, you know, Mike Neighbors had sort of, I guess he'd reached out to UConn earlier, like, you know, you're let's try to play if there's if we have an opening. And that, that opening was created for Arkansas and Vanderbilt shut down his women's program for the season so yeah it's pretty incredible i mean you have to give mike neighbors you know a lot of credit for one get you know scheduling them getting them here and then wanting to add to what our it's not like i said played enough teams as it is so it's, it really speaks well for mike and his team if they want to take on this challenge next thursday when we talk to you we'll have the super bowl set or we'll have the super bowl matchup set and ready to rock and roll so who's it going to be we got the championships this saturday and sunday who's going to be in the super bowl what you got I think it's a it's a uh, replay of Super Bowl one in the Coliseum, Kansas City Chiefs versus the Green Bay Packers. Ooh, that'd be a good matchup. The pack uh, with Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. So I, I, that's a good that's a good that's a good matchup. I like it. 
Hey, that well, was Ben Dawson that versus that. Bart Starr. That was fun too, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot more fun for the Packers. <laughs> I still remember that that picture that's made the rounds of Led Dawson sitting in the locker room on like a folding chair, smoking a cigarette. I think he's got a Fresca. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> you got to be of a certain age to know what Fresca <laughs> was. It was sort of like seven up. Uh, but uh, I don't think we'll, if that happens, I don't think we'll see Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes uh, smoking a cigarette. Half time. I hope not anyway. Probably not. But Bob, I think when you look at how these the league champ the, the, with the matchups that you got said, you got four you got the four best quarterbacks in the game right now. I mean, you got the two the old grizzled veterans with Aaron Rodgers and for sure Tom Brady. You got the face of the league and Patrick Mahomes and one of the young up and comers who could be the next face of the NFL and Josh Allen. For the NFL, from a brand perspective, from a marketing television, you can't ask for four for four better teams and the matchups that the that the that the league put together with this their championship series. So it's definitely going to be a fun weekend of football. Yeah, and of course, Aaron Rodgers, he's a kid compared to Tom Brady. I think Rodgers is only 37. And what, what's Brady, like 55 or something? Something um, like that. So, uh, yeah, especially that NFC matchup with Rodgers and uh, Brady. I mean, that's, um, you know, marketing heaven for the NFL. And, you know, you definitely, if you're the NFL, you want Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in there. And like you said, yeah. The Bills, um, you know, are, are back, you know, in the title, AFC title game for the first time since they were in the 90s. So, um, yeah, so there's, 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 there's a lot to like about. I mean, I think you know, these games always draw big audiences anyway, but there, there's definitely a lot of cachet with these two matchups. Bob, appreciate your time today, especially with all of the uh, Zooms you got to get in on. So we'll let you go. Happy Zooming, happy writing, and uh, thanks again. Thanks, Bob. Okay, you guys take care. You got it. It's Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Good to give us some of his time every Thursday on halftime. Packers Chiefs has a good ring to it. That'd be a good Super Bowl right there. I think that's what you're going to be looking at when it's all said and done. I think you can also look at 906lounge.com to learn about the upscale social social lounge that offers the finest spirits, wine, and cigars in northwest Arkansas. 906 Lounge is in Fort Smith, 906 Garrison Avenue, featuring top-shelf spirits, hand-rolled cigars, and outstanding menu items that you can view on their website. That's 906lounge.com. Great food like paninis, wings, flatbreads. Ask about the creme brulee cheesecake as well. They are open until 11 o'clock tonight. You can go to 906lounge.com to learn more. That's 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounge, and we are right back.